you know, just act as if it were a workshop. So if you want <clears> us to get in groups or share with a partner or whatever you want us to do, um, you know, obviously it's just two of us, but you can say like, okay, everybody get into groups or this is what I would sure. do in okay. a big group. Um, but we'll give you answers. If you ask us questions, we'd love you to ask us something and we'll answer as if we were the coaches in your workshop. So okay. I know All it's right. kind of a funky format, but we try to make it as realistic as possible. So no, sounds good. Sounds good. Have so, fun with it. All right. Great. Well, it looks like uh, we have everybody here, so we'll go ahead and get started. I want to thank you all for coming to our uh, PCA Triple Impact Competitor Workshop today. Uh, first things first, I know if uh, in, my, in my class, if you're one of my students, you would ask me if you get credit for this, and the answer is yes. But to do so, uh, what I need you to do is please take out your phone, and I need you to send a text to the number that you see on the screen. That's 650-763-2405. When you send that text, there are three important pieces of information you need to include. First is the number of our workshop, which you see is pound 0000. Uh, make sure that you do not put a space between the pound and the first zero. And then you're also going to include your la first and last name and your email address. And this will do a couple things for you. First of all, to get you credit for being here. Second of all, it will... Uh, with the email address, you'll start getting some, some emails from PCA with some coaching tidbits. Uh, what I liked about these when I first signed up is the fact that they're really quick hit. So I, everybody's busy, understand that. What's great about these is you can read them in two or three minutes, and they're just kind of nice reminders as you work your way through your season. And then it will also give you access to PCA's website, the, the development zone, which again is incredibly user friendly. What I really like about the development zone is that when you go onto that website, if you're having a specific issue, uh, it, He frozen? I think he's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> it's all sorted to get yourself get that text sent, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right. So it looks like everybody has gotten that done. Uh, so a couple things just to kind of get a cross section of who's here today. Uh, if you've been a coach for let's say one to five years, raise your hand, please. Six to ten. Ten to twenty. 20 and beyond. All right, what about uh, how many uh, coach boys? All right, girls coaches? All right, uh, high school coaches? Middle school? Youth? Okay, and how many people coach one sport? And how many coach multiple sports? Oh, right now I'm coaching one sport. But... <laughs> All right, great. Well. I, I think it's great to see the cross-section of people that we have here today. You'll notice that when I introduced, I talked a little bit about a workshop. And the idea is that this is meant to be interactive. It's meant for you to learn from me, and it's also meant for me to learn from you and for us to learn from each other. We all bring a diverse set of experiences here today, and uh, I hope that we come in with that mindset of being willing to share and being well, willing to listen, and I think we'll all walk out of here as better coaches. Now, my name is Jeff Huber. I am a high school boys basketball coach at Westlake High School. I actually just am on my first week in the job, but prior to that, I've been a varsity basketball coach for the last 10 years at two other high schools in the Cleveland area. Uh, I also have coached a little bit of uh, softball in my first couple years of teaching and played uh, baseball and uh, basketball through high school and then basketball in college. So, Decent amount of experience to share with you, and, and I'm excited to share some of the things that I've learned and some of the things that PCA can, can help us all with to go back to our teams. What I'd like to start with, you'll see that we talk about uh, being a double goal coach, so coaching for winning and life lessons. Uh, I read a book not too long ago, and the book was called, it was called Inside Out Coaching, and it was by a man named Joe Ehrman, who was a defensive lineman for the Baltimore Colts and then went on to become a highly successful high school football coach. And in the book, he challenges coaches to reflect on four questions. And I did this a couple years ago. I thought about it, wrote out some responses, and I found it to be really helpful. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to respond to all of them right now, but I'm gonna tell you all of them in case you wanna write them down. And in his book, he talks about two types of coaches. He talks about a transactional coach, or what PCA calls a win-at-all-cost coach. And he also talks about a transformational coach, or what we're gonna talk about is a double goal coach. And the four questions that he suggests that we reflect on are first, why do I coach? Secondly, why do I coach the way that I coach? 
Third, and I think this might be the most important one, but again, I think it needs some reflection, is how does it feel to be coached by me? And then fourth, and I am going to ask you to share a little bit on this one, is how do I define success? So Kelly and Ryan, if I were to ask you that last question, how do you define success as a coach? What would be some of the things that would come to mind for you? I'd say impact on their confidence level. Okay. I think um, when the kids want to come back year after year and, and they're excited, I just had a really awesome experience yesterday where a player I'm coaching, I'm mean, also a new coach to the high school and I okay. had a player that I, I coached when she was in fifth grade and she said she was in ninth grade now and she wasn't going to come out for the team. And then she heard I was coaching and she changed her mind to come out. So that just made my day. That's great. Yeah. Those stories are so cool. And I appreciate your answers. And I think that we're right on base there. Now, there's one thing uh, that that neither of you said, okay, that I think would be a way that a lot of coaches would define success. And anybody want to take a stab at what it might be? Wins, Wins. and losses. Winning, right? <laughs> and, and I think that it's okay if that's part of our answer. But I think that what we're here to talk about today is, and this is really the, the epitome of the double goal coach, is that yes, winning is important. And yes, uh, trying to do our best to win is important. But it's not the only thing. And there's other things that are more important, like some of those lessons that you said. But I think that we can do those things in conjunction. And as we'll talk about, and is kind of the motto of PCA, develop better athletes and better people simultaneously. Now, who is PCA? Uh, PCA was a nonprofit that is, was founded at Stanford in 1998. And you can see a little bit of information about who we are here. We train over 80,000 coaches. Uh, and you see over 2,500 live workshops. So we are spreading our message far and wide. Uh, as we continue to do the work of trying to spread positive coaching. So positive coaching. Uh, what does positive coaching mean to you? Thoughts on that? Making them feel good about themselves. Um, to me, I think it's when a coach is really enjoying what they're doing and um, getting a lot out of the athletes. Okay, great. I think both, well, they're both great answers. And at PCA, how, how we define it is creating an atmosphere that best that supports the best possible performance. And to go back to our questions about how we define success and the balance between winning and the answers that you gave in terms of seeing players grow their confidence, seeing players uh, come back and want to continue to play. We talked about this motto of better athletes, better people. And I think that that what we what I want you to understand is that those two things work both ways. So yes, it's true. We often hear people talk about how sports can build character. And absolutely, that is a huge part of what we're going to talk about today. That but I think it also works the other way. That if we develop better people, we will also have better teams. So even if you walked into this room, really just thinking about how can this workshop today help me win more? If you are able to instill, you know, make your athletes better people, you're going to win more. You know, if you develop the characteristics that, that we would want, hard workers, selfless, empathetic, okay, those are the type of teams that are going to be successful. So, again, I think these two things, both better athletes and better people, feed on each other and create an upward spiral of success. So as we start off and we talk about positivity, we're learning more and more that positivity is the type the positive environment supports success and supports the best possible performance. So, and this is supported by research. For example, Barbara Fredrickson wrote a great book called Positivity. She's done over 25 years of research on this. And if you look at the second quote here, she talks about how positive emotions are especially contagious and a leader's positive emotions are more contagious than anyone else's. Great quote, I love the message, I actually, was reminded of that recently. I read an article about Bill Walsh, the Hall of Fame football coach, and he had a quote that struck me, and it said, your enthusiasm becomes their enthusiasm, your mediocre presentation becomes their mediocre interest. And it's so powerful. It's so powerful to think that as coaches, we bear that responsibility. And, but it's really uh, not just responsibility, it's an opportunity. That if we create an environment that is positive and supportive, we will get the best out of our athletes and see the type of growth and development that we all would love to see uh, from those we coach. Also, the flip side of that, we're seeing that this negative and a physically and verbally abusive style of coaching just doesn't work anymore. 
you know, you see here this article from Sports Illustrated from 2015 called The Last Days of the Abusive Coach. And unfortunately, you know, some of us remember Bobby Knight when he was at Indiana and, you know, throwing chairs on the floor and unfortunately, you know, putting his hands on players and verbally abusing players. And we're learning that that just doesn't get the best performance. You know, if I were to ask you who the best bosses that you've ever worked for and who, what bosses got the best out of you, I would assume and if, well, let me ask that question. If I were to say who are the best, the characteristics of the best bosses you ever worked for, were they more towards the positive end of the spectrum or more towards the negative end of the spectrum? What, what would your experiences tell you? Definitely the positive end, more trusting. Definitely positive. And yeah. I was going to say trusted us, trusted me. Yeah, absolutely. And you can still be demanding and you can still try and get the best out of your athletes and push them while being positive. This is something that's supported by some of the best coaches in the world. Okay, so if you look at some of the people that are on the PCA advisory board, you see some great athletes and great coaches. One of the ones that stands out to me is Steve Curry, you know, the coach of the Golden State Warriors. I read an article about their team and their core values, and he talks about four core values. He talks about uh, joy, compassion, mindfulness, and competition. And I was talk when I read this, I was thinking to myself, if you just heard joy, compassion, and mindfulness, you would have no idea that he was talking about a professional sports team. Mm -hmm. And then you hear about competition. And to me, that's kind of the, the, the perfect blend of better athletes, better people. We want to enjoy, we want people to have a great experience, even pro athletes where people always talk about it's a business. We want them you know, to develop characteristics like compassion and mindfulness. And at the same time, you can still compete. And as the Warriors have shown, you can embody those, those uh, values while still being the best in the world and still being extremely competitive on the court. So now if we look at the flip side of this, unfortunately, we still do see negativity. And what is negative negativity too? Negativity distracts. We know it takes us out of the moment. And when we're not in the present moment, we obviously cannot perform as well as we would like to. So, so far, uh, do we agree that positivity works better? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. So with that said, then, if we all agree on that, and we've all experienced that in our own lives, then why do we think that there is still so much negativity in sports? I think it's a lot of the way we were coached. I think it works in the short term. It makes action happen when a coach yells at a player, the player jumps. So they think, oh, well, that's the easiest way to get players to do what I want is to use a loud, negative, you know, booming voice to get them to act. To act. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree. We're, we all as coaches, we sometimes feel pressure. We feel the need to get something done immediately. And to Kelly's point, sure, sometimes you might be able to get that instantaneous action that your behavior that you're looking for. Uh, but I think that if we take a bigger picture view, we all kind of know that perhaps that's not the best view that we want to take in the long term. So what we're going to look to do is fill that void. To Ryan's point, that a lot of us coached the way that we were coached. Okay, well, I think that we need to update that. And that's a big part of PCA's mission is we're going to give you some of the resources and not just, and not just resources, but research. Everything that we're going to talk about is research based and supported by data to help you understand how best to uh, maximize your athlete's performance. So a couple things that we will focus on. As I mentioned, it's all based in re research and data. So we're going to look at the sports re psychology research. Uh, we're going to look at best practices. And again, all these things work together to develop better athletes, better people, and, and I keep reiterating this, to make you as competitive as you can be on the court or on the field that you play on. What type of support will you have? Well, you're going to have the research-based coaching that we'll talk about. Uh, the, the, you're going to have some of the practical tools. I already talked about the PCA development zone, the weekly emails that you'll get. You also see a picture up here of the book that you received, The Power of Double Goal Coaching. What I really enjoyed about this book is you can probably read the whole thing in an hour and a half. But what's great about it is, again, you can go back to any segment and probably in 20 minutes get a refresher and get some great ideas to take back to your team. So if you're going to talk about a little bit later about you know, filling the emotional tank, and if you notice that maybe your team's energy is down and they're struggling to you know, pick each other up and create that energy that you want to practice, well, you can go back and read that chapter, read that section of the book in 20 minutes, and you're going to find a handful of practical ideas that you can take back to your team to help them uh, address whatever issues that you're having. 
So as we focus in a little bit here, you see the question on, on the screen. It says, what makes a great youth sports experience for kids? And I'd like to, you to think about this in the context of if you're a parent, your own child, or maybe if you're not a parent, if you, or if you were. If you sign your child up to play youth sports, what would be the things that you would hope that they would get out of that experience? I would say that I hope that my child gets um, gets to learn a little bit about work ethic, about working hard as a team, and um, learning. I think I think mostly just I want them to have fun, but I want them to learn that you know success comes at the end of hard work, and uh, you know not that it's just all fun and games. Great, absolutely. Yeah, I would say too that um, you know I really hope they they just develop more self confidence, self awareness and the ability to battle adversity, uh, knowing that the external environment is, is can be very challenging at times. Absolutely. So we're talking about, you know, understanding the connection between hard work and success or growth, understanding uh, how to deal with adversity and to not give up and kind of the, the perseverance and determination that we want. Those are, those are great answers. At PCA, we kind of talk about three things. Uh, one is connection. We want to feel, I think we want our youth athletes to feel connected, one, to their teammates and to their coach. So they feel like they're part of big, something that's bigger than themselves. Uh, secondly, and to a little bit of what both of you said, we want them to believe they can improve. We talk, we'll talk more about this idea of a growth mindset, but the idea that through hard work, I can get better. Uh, and finally, we want them to feel proud about acting with integrity. We'll talk about the idea that we're going about things the right way uh, and that we are proud of that, that we're proud to act with integrity. And if we do those three things, if your players were to get those three things out of their experience, what might happen as a result of that? I'll have Wins. success. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have a better team. There, to go back to uh, what we said at the beginning or what Kelly, what you said at the beginning, they're gonna wanna continue to play. Okay, and those are, I think, are really meaningful for us as coaches. So. Well, we're going to focus on the PCA coaching model, three parts to that. Okay, when we talk about connection, we'll spend some time talking about filling the emotional tank. When we talk about improving and this idea of a growth mindset, we'll talk about the idea of the elm tree of mastery, ELM, and we'll talk about what that stands for. And then with integrity, we'll talk about honoring the game. One of our, uh, one of our PCA uh, Representatives is, is Herm Edwards, and you're going to see a video here from Herm Edwards, the former NFL coach and current Arizona State coach, talking a little bit about understanding your legacy. Can I just jump ahead for this? Yeah, we can pretend that we played it. Mm -hmm. So you see here, one of the things that Herm talks about is when the book of your life is written, will it say that you made a difference? And I saw this, I think this is a really powerful question. I saw it phrased a little bit differently. Uh, when there was a, a famous quote about Alonzo Stagg, a famous football coach who was asked at the end of a season, how did, what type of a coaching job did you do this year? And his response was, ask me in 20 to 30 years. And the first time I heard that, I was kind of blown away, like that, that somebody would you know, have that kind of big picture vision. Uh, but what I would like you to do is perhaps turn to each other and think about, about this. What would you like people to say about you as a coach? Do you want me to just jump ahead? Or we, is that just like a pair share thing? You said you want me to jump ahead or we want to? No, if you want us to share it, we would. Okay. No, I'd like it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Then go ahead. I mean, would you have us share that out loud? Uh, I, I mean, if time allowed, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead, Ryan. What would you like them to say about you as a coach? Have I'll you let you share first. Sure. Have you ever heard the song, Good Man? <laughs> There's a father, a brother, a lover, a neighbor, and a friend. <laughs> He's a good man. That's that's ultimately what it is. You know, I just want to be able to leave and, and make a lasting impact on other people. Thanks. Yeah, I just want I would love my players to say that, you know, they felt that I was their number one fan, helped them fall in love with the sport and um, and just just push them, you know, push them past the point where they, they thought they could in a really caring way. That's great. And I think what you guys are really hitting on is the essence of what it means to be a double goal coach. We've already talked about the fact that, yes, we're all competitive. We all want to win. And if you look on this slide, you see the two circles. You see the striving to win circle, and you see the teaching life lessons circle. 
So what, what we would call win at all cost coaches just focused on the striving to win. What we want to achieve and our goal is to all be a double goal coach where we both, where we understand that yes, striving to win is important, but teaching life lessons is even more important. And it's that focus on teaching life lessons that's really the differentiator and is going to allow and set the stage for your players to say those things about you uh, that you just hope that they would say. Now, though, on this slide, you see the two circles, but you also see the and sign. And the reason is this. These two goals really do and should complement each other. Okay, as your players continue to work hard and continue continue to embrace the ideals that you want them to embrace, they're going to become better people. They're going to learn how to deal with adversity. They're going to learn the, the connection between hard work and success. And when they do that, it's going to turn right back around and they're going to have more success on the field or on the court. And as we talked about, this will continue to spiral upward and continue to benefit them. What we have to keep in mind, though, is that when things are going well, it's easy to be a double goal coach. The real test of who we are as a double goal coach is what happens when these two things come into conflict. What happens when we have to make a decision between striving to win and teaching a lesson to one of our players? Uh, do either of you have an example that you might be willing to share where perhaps you had a, a tough decision to make where those two goals kind of came into conflict? Yep. <laughs> um I had it happen last week. I had uh, one of my best players on the team decided to go away for the weekend and not tell us. So she wasn't at practice on Friday or Saturday and we had a game on Monday and I really wanted to start her and I couldn't because that was my rule that you can't start in a game if you've been absent. And also they were unexcused absences. So right. um, I put her in like five minutes of the second half and we were losing. And a lot of the girls on my team were like, coach, coach, put in Emma. Like she needs to go in. And I was like, sorry, I can't do it. But it was really tempting because she usually scores like most of the goals for us. Yeah, it, it, and those decisions are so difficult. You know, I, I would speak to – I had an experience uh, three years ago. We had a, a, a player that I coached on my basketball team, the best player I've ever coached. He's actually playing at Dayton right now. And uh, we went on an overnight trip, and he uh, uh, broke a rule and brought brought people into his room after, after curfew and then was dishonest about it. And – I found out about it a day later, and he we ended up uh, suspending him for about about twenty percent of our season, and it was incredibly difficult to do. And I knew the team was going to suffer as a result of it. Uh, but to the point of what we're trying to talk about today, do I think I did the right thing? Yes. Do I think at the time he realized it? No. Do I think he does now. I think I think that he does, and I think that that's really what we're hoping for. That maybe in the moment, maybe Emma or maybe. Dwayne, the young man I'm talking about, that they didn't quite understand what we were trying to accomplish or didn't think it was fair. But the hope and the goal is that with continued maturity, uh, that they will look back and respect us more for doing the right thing rather than the expedient thing that's just focused on trying to win a game. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think, is that, the, is that the last slide I'm going through? I think that's that, it. Yeah. Okay. That's right. it. Cool. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, you're Thanks. Yeah, that was a great. Great time management there. That's that's hard to do in 20 minutes as a new trainer. And I thought that was that was really well done. Absolutely. Very smooth. Yeah. Thanks. So Ryan, I'd love to hear, um, you know, seeing Jeff, if this was a workshop, what are some suggestions? What'd you like? What stuck out for you that he did? And then maybe if you have some suggestions um, for him to improve on or tighten up a little bit as he gets ready yeah. to go out to the live workshops. Absolutely. There, there was a lot that I liked. Um, first, I think just your, your presence and, and the way your voice carries how clearly you speak i think those alone are, are very very big assets in in a room you know especially when you're talking rooms that you really don't know what the acoustics are going to be like so i think you've yeah. got that coach's voice and and that that's very evident which is awesome um I, I love the the personal touch when you were going through that that text to sign in process for even a lot of our trainers here in cleveland is super awkward um, and I think the way you went through it and clearly articulated the importance of why we're doing it and then gave specific personal examples as to how you utilize the emails and, um, you know, how you utilize the development zone. Those two really stuck out for me right from the very beginning and told me immediately that this guy gets it. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of times it's, there, there's a couple of trainers, believe it or not, even after multiple conversations that are like, oh, this is more of a check-in thing for PCA to make sure I'm actually delivering these workshops. And I'm like, that's not at all what it is. Sure. Um, right. 
so I, I thought that was a really big, uh, really big deal for me. I think the other thing is you did a really good job at the very beginning of setting the expectations that it is an interactive workshop, um, that you know the importance of sharing and you being able to learn from them just as much as they're learning from you is really what you know what we're trying to do. So I thought that was great. Um, the reference to uh, a couple different books um, that you've read, I think, are really good. A because you're able to relate our content to um, to other things that already exist out there, but then you're also giving them through that some additional tools outside of what we've already provided them and will provide them through the workshop, which I think is incredibly valuable. Um, the other two things that that really jumped to me kind of throughout is your ability to relate back to previous conversations that the audience was participating in. So you reference multiple times throughout the presentation something that I said or something that Kelly said, and, and even to the point that you specifically utilized a name that Kelly had given you through the conversation. So it shows mm -hmm. that you're listening. Um, it shows that that it is really a, a truly two-way street and you're not just checking the box to make it interactive and then moving on to the next thing. Um, mm -hmm. So that was huge for me. Um, the other big one uh, is just the connection to real life. Um, you know, knowing that most of the coaches in attendance are oftentimes not just full-time coaches. You know, the reference that you made specifically to bosses and how, you know, they feel in terms of their relationship with their bosses. And um, that to me is something that, that we just need to do a better job of, you know, in general is connecting those dots to real life examples, um, you know, and in content that they live and breathe on a day-to-day -day basis that's yeah. non-sport specific. Um, but shows the correlation. So those were all things that um, that I, I really liked. Um, Kelly, I don't know if there's anything else that, that you wanted to add on that front or? Oh no, you can keep going and then I'll, I'll add. Okay, yeah, um, honestly on the, the negative side, um, there wasn't too much. The only thing that I would, uh, there actually really wasn't hardly anything on the negative side. Um, the only thing that I would just quickly reference and not, and it's something that I think is somewhat of a sensitive topic sometimes in, in different um, in different parts, and that's the reference to inside out coaching specifically. Okay. Um, only because, and, and I don't have an issue with it, just so you're generally aware, but there's a, this is more of an awareness thing. There's a perception especially in the high school space that we're in competition with inside out coaching. Okay. Oh, okay. So I would encourage you to keep using it because sure. in my opinion, we're not at all in competition with inside out coaching. If anything, we're on the same team. And okay. so the only reason I'm, I'm making you aware of that is, sure. and I definitely encourage you to keep it in is because if an athletic director is in the room, a lot of my challenge in getting PCA content into schools is, hey, we're already partnered with Inside Out um, okay. because they do some different aspects of, of what we do. And, okay. um, you know, they do it a little I, bit different. I didn't different. Even know that they had a program. I didn't, just was only aware of the book. I didn't know that they did. Yeah. Yeah, they do. It's, it's different, though, um, from, my, from my understanding. They, they do it more primarily through athletic directors and leadership than they do necessarily super interactive workshops with coaches and um, you know parents and, and the athletes themselves. So okay. it's a little more top end culture heavy. And it's from what I understand, it's really, really good. And again, I sure. from my perspective, it's, you know, we're on the same team in terms of remission. Actually Joe Airman's on our national advisory board. So right. um, so I just wanted to give you more of a heads up that I really okay. actually I like that that side of the the fact that you specifically referenced that book okay mm -hmm. so and i was wondering too ryan is that more of a local program yeah i think I'm it's it right now i think it's very um localized so they have a really deep relationship with the ohsaa okay. um okay and then they also have a relationship with uh the oi triple a which is the uh athletic advisor or the Athletic Administrators Association. Okay. Um, and so okay. I actually just recently, last week, at the end of last week, had a conversation with the guy who heads the OIAA. Um, okay. And, and had almost exactly this conversation because he's like, yeah, he's like, I'll admit we've been in the past used inside out. And I said, I'm so glad you brought that up because there's a yeah. perception that we're competition. I just want to make sure you understand that 
from our end, I do not see that in any way, shape, or form. And I explained it in an even deeper level than what we're talking about. But um, but they work with the Browns. They work with um, OHSAA, OIAAA, and okay. then okay. they've got some schools that they're they're working with as well. Which again, I think is great. And, and I'm trying to work with mm -hmm. the same schools to take a different, additional um, you know approach to those organizations. So it's a combined effort there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's it's a huge local one for us here, okay. Kelly, in, in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was just brought to my attention last week, actually, because I mentioned something about I, I just found out that Joe Ehrman is the godfather of a good friend of mine, and I didn't even know that. Oh, wow. And, um, and then, yeah, and then Joe Tarasi mentioned like, oh, yeah, and people think we're in a competition with the business. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard of that before. Really? So he didn't know if it was a local, um, yeah, like the local to the Ohio area or. Um, but anyway, um, but anyway I, I love Joe I love Joe I, I think those questions, those questions were great enough to ask. And ask and I think, uh, I think uh, you know, people, coach, a lot of trainers ask a lot of those questions in workshops and don't. Hi, Ruben. And don't uh, consider yeah. the source and where they're from. So I really like the way that you you had the right sources for all of these questions. Um, I thought that was fantastic. Jeff, I was just super impressed. Um, could not tell this was the first time you had done this. Just so smooth and polished and well-prepared. Um, you obviously are a, a fantastic educator and a great communicator. And that that's something that doesn't come easily. It comes with years and years and years of preparation. So I really do appreciate. Um, well, thank you. I, I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, I really love just, just the flow, as Ryan said, the way that you communicated things was so, was made me, it drew me in. It made me think of like, you know, I do want to know this and I do want to get help with this. Um, very expert in the room, but very humble. And I think that's a really nice balance too, to have of, I know what I'm talking about here, but I'm willing to, I want to hear from you too. I want to, I want to get some ideas from you. I thought that was great. Um, I also love how you took like inside out coaching, for example, and you used his language, the transactional coaches versus transformational coaches, but you linked it to PCA. So you said, you know, transactional coaches would be what PCA would call a win at all cost coach and a transformational coach would be our, because some people might have heard of that before. So I like the way you linked that to um, PCA. I love asking coaches right off the bat, why do they coach? I think it's one of the best questions you can ask. Um, why do I coach the way I coach? I think that gets, you know, a little bit maybe into what you talked about later. Um, I love the question also, how does it feel to be coached by me or would you want to be coached by you? Um, sure. I always think that's a really great thought provoking, co provoking question. The um, how do you define success question? I think it was good for us to answer it, but I would almost rather see you ask that when we get to mastery because okay. that is really the core oh, of mastery okay, of how yeah. do you define success and it's redefining that. So I might pick a different one of Joe Orman's questions in the very intro beginning to yeah. get us thinking and save the success question for um, um, for later. Makes sense. So yeah. just, a, just a comment. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, you're yeah, welcome to, yeah. you know, I like it there, but <laughs> um, sure. I like the way that you took the um, better athletes, better people and went a little bit further and said, better people, better teams, better teams, more wins. You know, I thought that was, it's just a great way to, to just connect it to performance. I thought that was excellent. And again, you know, like Bill Walsh quotes, like I love quotes and I love, I think coaches really appreciate when you're grabbing quotes from all different people and the people that you grabbed were, advisory board members of PCA, which doesn't hurt, which is fantastic. Um, I, again, I also like the boss thought because um, it really made me think about like, wait, what what did my boss do? Because a lot of times you'll think about a boss that was negative or a boss that was positive. But I like the way you said, like, what did they do? And the trust was the first thing that came to me. And um, I don't know that I've been asked that necessarily in a workshop before. I thought that was a really good question. The um, I love Steve Kerr. I love the core values of Steve Kerr. And I think you can even hit it a little bit more. You, it just tiny little phraseology I picked up on. And you said um, that, you know, Steve Kerr wants his athletes to embody, even, even Steve Kerr wants his okay. athletes to embody these things. And they are the best rather than, you know, sure. really attributing there's a reason they're the best. And the reason yeah, that they're okay. the best is because they embody these qualities, you know, not like yeah. they just happen to have these qualities on the side. I think that's, that's part of the keys to Steve yeah. Kerr's success, that he okay. actually believes in these core values in his team. I mean, who, how many professional teams use, you know, joy and compassion and mindfulness as a core value. So I thought that was great. Um, I actually, when you were talking about research based, I put down, don't forget best practices of coaches. And then you added that later. Okay. So I think sometimes we get so focused on like, this is all research. This is all research. But um, to me, research happens in a lab and research has to be translated to a field or a court in order to make it real. So I love the fact that we're research-based. I'm an educator myself, so I love all that. 
but I also like transitioning to, and the research plays out on the field. And we use okay. a lot of our, you know, the research has been used and studied by the best practices of coaches, just like you. And we're finding that it works. So that's sort of the, where I like to say, um, the, um, the only thing I would add, Jeff, is a story about you. I don't know much about you. I know where you've coached. I know what you've done. I knew you played baseball. And, but I'd love to hear what, like, Whenever I hear a speaker or go to a lecture or go to a workshop, I want to know why is that person standing in front of me? Okay. So why, you know, was it a player that you saw had a transformation? Was it a coach that you had that inspired you? Was it the way that you used to coach versus the way you coach now? I would just, I think stories are a great way to connect coaches to what our mission is and what you're doing. Yeah. So I, I would just love to hear just some type of in your, in your introduction, some type of a personal little quick, um, either an anecdote or a story about, you know, this is why I feel it's important to be here. Um, okay. I that, just think that would help connect. That is spot on, Kelly. And that's, I mean, I'm doing that even with our board, um, mm -hmm. our leadership council level, our associates board, anybody that's engaged within our chapter, I'm making sure they're clearly articulating their why. So we're adding it to their bios on their web, on the website. We're adding it to a bunch of places because that is that is huge um and when those mm -hmm. people see those personal connections um you know like prime example westlake high school is a partner I, had, I requested a testimonial from them as to not just why they they see it uh, or why they join but now why they're going to continue to work with us um mm -hmm. moving forward because i think those pieces are are so key so i love that yeah it makes sense yeah. for sure yeah, we actually had a trainer yesterday do a demo and he said, he that was actually one of his questions for us was um, turn to a partner and tell them a story about a player that's impacted you and why. Yeah. And I thought, what a great way. Like I've never, I've always been asked questions, but never actually mm -hmm. been asked to turn and tell someone a story. And right away, you know, a player came to mind. Ruben had one that came into his mind and it was really neat for to get us to think of it as a story Yeah. and, and you know, a life story. So I thought that was great too. Um, okay. I also agree with Ryan. I love your I call them circular references when you're constantly going back to what Ryan said earlier, what Kelly said, this example, you brought up the player, Emma, and what she did. Like that is just, coaches will just get their tanks filled for lack of a better word. I mean, when you reference something I said and you remember it and you go back to it, that's just, that's awesome. That's huge. So I love that. Um, and again, you even use like the upward spiral word. I mean, that's exactly what we want. We want the language to just flow into every aspect of the workshop rather than being a disjointed, you know, three sections here. We want it to just all flow together. And I thought you did that so well. Um, and again, you know, one of my favorite quotes is how easy it is to be a double goal coach when you're winning. So kudos for that. I always, I always think that's a good line. Everybody's a double goal coach when you're winning. That's right. <laughs> it's just winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jeff, I'm excited. Um, the next demo would be, um, and you, I'm totally fine with you making it your final demo. I don't think you need to do a lot of these because you've. Okay. I want to get you out and live coaches, but I would okay. love to have you practice um, doing one of the principles because gotcha. the format of that is a little bit different because okay. the principle section, this, this intro is more of the why and sure. inspiring us and motivating us and getting us to want to listen. Um, the principle section is more of the quick why. Let's do a scenario to get you to link this to your team and then the tools are the concrete, what are the coaches gonna take away from this? And I'd love to see your creative ways to get us as coaches to practice some of these. How okay. do we connect it to what we're doing? Um, you know, How can you make it real for us and have us use the book as a resource to help us so that we're motivated to go out and use it on the field tomorrow? Um, okay. Sounds great. So the format's a little bit different, but you know, I'm just excited to see you do that portion. So you can pick, it doesn't have to be emotional tank, you can do Elm Tree of Mastery or Honoring the Game. Uh, okay. One of the three, but I would just love to see you do that, and then uh, you know we'll we'll try to look for some workshops that we can get you out to to um, have you do. We usually have you do half of the workshop with a live trainer first, okay, um, so that you can see them, they can see you, and then um, and then you know we're on your way to getting you certified. So I'm excited. That, that sounds great. Can I? Um, I'm looking a little bit ahead of my schedule, so can I send you guys an email in the next couple of days and try and pin out a time to do that? Yeah, you can send it today if you want. Absolutely. Okay. That sounds great. All right. Thanks so much. I appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Excellent job, Jeff. Very good. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Kelly. Right. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, Thanks have a good, good night. Are right, you too?